Every time conflict escalates, whether it's Russia-Ukraine war or more recently, the growing tension between Iran and Israel, one word starts trending again, nuclear. Headlines warn of a nuclear flashpoint, but what does that really mean? And why are nuclear weapons so dangerous? And how are they even made? In this video, we'll demystify the science behind nuclear bombs. We'll understand the materials, the reactions and the engineering that turn small amounts of matter into the most destructive force ever created. But first, let's understand something fundamental. How nuclear energy differs from conventional explosives. Chemical explosives like TNT, trineutrotoline and composition C4 work by rapidly breaking chemical bonds between atoms in their molecules. When triggered by heat, shock or a detonator, these compounds undergo an extremely fast exothermic reaction, releasing gases and heat in microseconds. This sudden expansion creates a powerful blast wave that causes destruction. Note here that in these explosions, atoms stay intact. The energy comes from breaking or forming bonds between atoms. But in nuclear explosions, we go a level deeper. The nucleus inside the atom is split or combined. We call them nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. That means protons and neutrons inside the nucleus are rearranged. This process releases much more energy than chemical reactions because the nuclear force that holds the nucleus together is far stronger than the forces between atoms in a molecule. In fact, nuclear force is the strongest force in the universe. So let's begin with nuclear fission. Fission occurs when the nucleus of a heavy atom like uranium-235 or plutonium-239 is struck by a neutron. This collision makes the nucleus unstable and it splits into two smaller nuclei. Now, two very important things happen. One, a massive amount of energy is released in the form of heat and radiation. And second, two or three more neutrons are ejected in the process. Now, why massive amount of energy is released? This is because the total mass of the original nucleus, say uranium-235 and the incoming neutron, is slightly more than the total mass of the fission fragments and the emitted neutrons, as described by Einstein's famous equation E is equal to mc squared. Second is the binding energy difference. The nuclear binding energy is the energy that holds protons and neutrons together inside a nucleus. Heavy nuclei like uranium-235 are less tightly bound per nucleon than medium mass nuclei like barium or krypton. When uranium-235 splits into these smaller nuclei, the resulting nuclei are more stable meaning they have a higher binding energy per nucleon. The difference in the binding energy is released during fission. So, now we understood why massive amount of energy is released. But why more neutrons are released? When the nucleus splits, the two resulting nuclei are often unstable. Additionally, these free neutrons are left over that don't fit neatly into the new nuclei. So, they are ejected. On average, two to three neutrons are released per fission event. These are crucial. If those neutrons go on to hit other fissile atoms, more fission events occur. This creates a chain reaction, which is what makes the explosion grow rapidly and uncontrollably. But for this to work, you need one critical condition to be met, something called critical mass. Now, what is critical mass? Critical mass is the minimum amount of fissile material needed so that, on average, every fission event causes at least one more. If there's not enough material, many neutrons just escape into space and the reaction fizzles out. But when the material is dense enough and configured correctly, you get a self-sustaining chain reaction that releases an enormous amount of energy in a fraction of a second. And that's what creates the deadly power of an atomic bomb like the one dropped on Hiroshima. At 11.02 a.m., the B-29 dropped an atomic bomb on Nagasaki. 
Iran is also trying to achieve critical mass to make their nuclear weapons. But there's also another kind of nuclear reaction, one that's even more powerful, and that brings us to nuclear fusion, the energy that powers the sun. If fission is about splitting heavy atoms, fusion is about combining the light ones. In fusion, two light nuclei, usually isotopes of hydrogen like deuterium and tritium, are forced to merge. And when they do, they form a helium nucleus and release a tremendous amount of energy. But there's a catch. Both hydrogen nuclei are positively charged and light charges repel each other. So to bring them close enough for the stronger nuclear force to take over and fuse them, you need extremely high temperature and pressure. How high? Think millions of degrees, the kind of temperature found at the core of the sun. So how do we achieve that on Earth? That's where hydrogen bombs or thermonuclear weapons come in. They use a fission bomb as a trigger. When that first stage explodes, it creates an extreme heat and pressure needed to ignite fusion in the second stage. This is why hydrogen bombs are vastly more powerful than simple atomic bombs. They combine fission and fusion in a two-stage design. And the energy? It's on a whole different scale. While the Hiroshima bomb had a yield of about 15 kilotons, hydrogen bombs can reach megaton level destruction and hundreds of times more powerful. But whether fusion or fission, can we use any atom or is there a specific atom which can actually fuel a nuclear bomb? We'll explore this in our next video.